Hi, I'm Kirk Weiler and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about math lesson screencasts. I've been doing a lot of these screencasts lately with my math for honors group. Um, now granted they are primarily juniors and at the honors level so they're a, they're a special type of student who are very motivated. What I've been doing is I've been using a Macintosh and before that a PC to essentially record each lesson that I do. Um, this has a lot of obvious advantages and it's um, changed quite a bit of my dynamic with students, especially students that are absent. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of a demonstration today on what can be done, um, specifically geared towards what can be done by using a Macintosh. So what I do is I take a document or a math document that I've written in Microsoft Word, typically on a PC, and I create a PDF out of it. I can then import the PDF into Macintosh and Macs make it very easy to cut and paste um, portions of PDFs into other documents. And I use something that's very, very similar to PowerPoint um, for the actual lessons. I use something called Keynote, which is sort of the standard presentation uh, software on Mac as opposed to PowerPoint. So I'll take you know a problem and I'll just paste it right into the lesson. The beautiful thing about this is that then um, the students see exactly the exercises that I did in class. Uh, this is obviously not from a Math for Honors lesson. Uh-oh, you got to go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I hadn't activated my pen, so it just advanced the uh, advanced the slide. But I can highlight I can highlight terms like piecewise linear, made up of straight line segments. Right? I can really call their attention to particular things I want to. Then of course I go through the problem, maybe in a similar way to I, that I did in class, probably because you know it's me. But oh hey, I want to evaluate f of one, so I'll go over to the graph at one and I'll go up and I'll find that that's at a y value of one, two, three, four. So this might be a nice introductory lesson on how to use uh, function notation or how to use a graph to evaluate a function. f of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I can go down to y equals negative 2. Obviously I might be taking a little bit more care with it. Um, what I'm using is I'm using a tablet that allows me to write as much as I want or whatever I want. Um, it can give me an explan I can write explanations, the largest value is one, two, three, four. I can change colors so that I can highlight points of interest. Right? What I typically do is after I fill up a problem, which this one isn't, uh, I then pause for a little bit. I let the students know it's coming. I pause. I let them be able to look at the text so if they need to copy anything down and then I go and I scrub the text out because unlike some of the packages that we use with Microsoft Word like Start Inking, this text would actually stay with me if I went on to the next slide, which I'm going to do now. One of the things that the software that I use on the Mac allows me to do is it allows me to zoom in and out of particular problems. I try to optimize these videos for use on a smartphone and they look actually quite good when you look at them on a smartphone. Actually on a full screen uh, sort of computer view, it, it gets a little bit blurry. Um, I imagine it might be even a little bit blurry now if we're watching this on an interactive whiteboard. But let me show you what I mean by zooming. So let's let's take a look at another function problem. Uh, I guess I'll just stick in red. Here I give a function, right? And uh, number one is an explanation, so I'm not going to go through that. But let's say I get to letter B and where I ask to evaluate f of 6 and f of negative 9. You know, if I evaluate f of 6, and I'm going to leave it on the full screen, and I do, you know, 6 divided by 3 plus 7, 2 plus 7, and I get 9, well that's fine, you know, and uh, maybe younger eyes than mine are, are good to go. But let, let me just change the color really quick to blue. Now let's say I zoom in and I show you what f of negative 9 looks like. Right, in this case f of negative 9, now the student can see the thing up front, right, they can see the text a lot better, right, and they can get a much better sense for what I'm doing because it's not on a zoomed out. Now, of course, zooming out is no problem. I can zoom right back out now. And that would allow me then to come back to the letter C, right, where I'm solving f of x equals 13. So maybe they see the, the problem set up, right? And then I zoom back in so that I can then show them the solving of the equation. Right. And again, all the technology is actually not that pricey. I mean, yeah, it costs some, but I think eventually the investment may very well be worthwhile. So zoom in back out. 
they get to take a look at the whole screen, right? Eventually I'd do letter D, but they'd look at the whole screen and I'd go, I'd say, okay, I'm gonna scrub the text and then I'd scrub it, right? Now, obviously there's a lot of advantages to this technology. Um, the very clear one is that it's really changed the dynamic between my students and I in terms of absences, right? They have no excuses and they know it. I sent a letter home to the parents so they know about the videos. And now when they're absent, they especially when they're gonna be absent ahead of time, they let me know, but they know they can get the worksheet on the, uh, the website. They can watch the video, and I, the expectation is that they they're just they're right on track with everybody else. Um, a lot of my students tell me that they use it for review. So right before a test or a quiz, they'll watch any of the lessons that they were confused about. Um, some of them definitely use it for reinforcement. In other words, you know they they watch the lesson after I give a lesson, right? In case they were a little bit confused, and some of them even have taken to watching them before I give the lesson. That's a little weird, but it happens. Finally, remediation, which is not something that I do a lot, obviously, with the Math for Honors kids yet with the video, but I could definitely see it. Um, very curious to see during finals time um, if I can do a little bit of remediation work with this. I did give them a quiz a couple weeks ago that didn't go, let's say, as well as I wanted it to. Um, I then uh, did a video about the solutions to the quiz and had the kids watch it and leave me a comment granted for extra credit, but uh, that was enough to get almost every one of them to watch it, as I'm, I'm sure you can appreciate. So ultimately speaking, you know, it leaves me with a pretty, pretty simple question, right? There's a lot of technology that comes along and it alters what we do and how we do it, but I think that obviously online learning is going to become a huge buzzword in the future. This is a way to get our foot in the door to start doing things and considering things like flipping classrooms, remediating, remediating kids, giving, giving them a lot more opportunities to learn a lesson. You know, we've all been in that situation where the first time we saw the lesson, we were very, very confused, right? But as we see it, maybe again and again and again, it makes more sense to us. I realize that the fundamental premise of all this technology is that you have motivated kids who are willing to do it. But think about how much easier it is for a kid now to pull out their, their smartphone, go into their YouTube app, and simply open up a video and watch it. They can do it on the bus, they can do it whenever. If we give them the opportunity, more of them will do it. Not all of them, but more of them. Anyway, that's it. I hope that you appreciate the, uh, the screencast, and um, we'll talk to you soon. I'm Kirk Weiler. Take care.